a glorious day to all my fellow and future hobbyists out there. My name is Matthew, I'm your BRS beginner guru. This is episode 45, part B, so in case you missed part A, check that out before watching this video. We're not gonna mess around today, we're gonna jump right in to how to put corals into your tank. methods of putting corals in your tank. There are so many ways to do this. Some ways look better than others, but there is no right or wrong way. Well, there's probably, okay, I take that back. There probably is a wrong way, but <laughs> let me just tell you some of the ways that you can successfully put corals into your tank. You can do it with a frag plug. You can literally just take the entire frag plug, glue that somewhere onto your aquascape and you're done. Doesn't necessarily look the best, but if it's encrusting coral, it'll encrust over eventually. You can remove the coral from the frag plug. This works really well with stony corals, pop it off its base, then just glue the stony portion directly to the aquascape and the frag plug ugliness is gone. You can take a frag plug and you can trim it so that you don't see very much. This can be a really good idea if you have a small encrusting coral on a larger frag plug and you don't wanna stare at that frag plug for the next year as it encrusts, you can take your bone cutters and just trim around it. Then you have super glue. Super glue is probably the most common way of attaching a coral or a frag plug to your aquascape it can get a little bit tricky and you may need to use a lot more than you think because as soon as you put the glue underwater it develops a little film over it so you'll be there trying to stick it on to the aquascape and it just won't hold but this is probably the most common way to attach corals next up you have epoxy there are different colored epoxies out there I think this one is a gray this one is a coralline color I would obviously just choose the one that most matches the color of your rock but epoxy can be really helpful when attaching larger pieces of coral, creating more of a structure around that coral to put it into place. The next method is the epoxy super glue trick. You can actually take some super glue, put it on the bottom of the epoxy, then on the top of the epoxy, put some more super glue, take your coral frag, put it onto there, and then attach it to the aquascape. Sometimes that just holds better. Then there is the no glue method. This works best if you have some sort of frag that has the base on it and you have a large crevice. Sometimes it works perfectly where you can just trim up the frag plug and then place that base down into the crevice and it stays put. But I would definitely still recommend using some glue because there are critters that will knock it over. Sea urchins are notorious at this, but even snails, especially turbo snails, they can be total bulldozers. And if you don't glue it onto place, and I have definitely made this mistake, check out this picture of an A can that I used to have that used to be full of corals and then a snail knocked it over and more than half of it died. So still glue it into place. And the last method of attaching corals to the aquascape is just by creating an island. Islands are fantastic, especially for rather invasive and fast spreading corals. You'll most commonly see islands for things like GSP or green star polyps, zoanthids, palithoas, and especially for things like pulsing xenia, things that grow fast and will take over everything. Just put them on an island and move them a little bit away from the main aquascape. We're almost to the step-by-step -step instructions, but first let me give you some tips and tricks to consider before we get there. Number one, always secure corals to your aquascape. I already mentioned it. Just placing corals on your aquascape is a bad idea. Even a small snail may be able to go by, knock it off its place. It ends up on the sand bed flipped over and it's dead. Tip number two, there are certain corals that are meant to be placed on the sand bed or that can be placed on the sand bed. And there's nothing wrong with this. Don't get me wrong. I place them on the sand bed all the time. But if you are going to put corals on a sand bed, let's take acans as an example, probably don't want to buy a sand sifting goby because what you will find is your goby will just be doing his or her own business and will completely cover the coral up. So just consider what other livestock you have before placing corals on the sand bed. Number three, I've already mentioned this, but super glue once put underwater will create a skin on it, which will make it a lot less sticky. That skin can be really tricky, so you may have to hold that coral in place for quite a bit longer. Accelerant here really works. Using something like the Instaset can help that super glue harden quicker. That way it creates a structure and secures more quickly to the aquascape. Number four is with epoxy. If you ever use epoxy underwater, be sure to turn off your protein skimmer. If you don't, I don't know what it is about epoxy, but epoxy is like steroids for your protein skimmer and your skimmer will immediately overflow. Trust me, it will go crazy. So be sure to turn off your protein skimmer if you're using epoxy. And the last tip, tip number five, I think, I've actually lost count. Don't 
use plastic super glue bottles underwater. What's gonna happen if you do is you're just probably gonna have to throw away that bottle of super glue. The salt water will make the super glue harden in the little tube and then you'll have to throw it away or you'll spend a lot of time trying to cut or heat or somehow remove that super glue from that plastic tip. If you're gonna use super glue underwater, which is totally fine, use something metal. That way when you squeeze a super glue out, water doesn't go back into the tube itself. Here we go, step by step, how to attach corals to your aquascape. We are not gonna go through every single method and every single way of doing this possible, but we're just gonna touch on the most common, easy ways to do it. You can get much more advanced later on. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn that skimmer off, getting your hands in there, putting new corals in super glue epoxy may just make the skimmer overflow, so turn it off first. Next is turn your return pump and your wave makers off. Having still water inside your display tank will allow the glue and epoxy to harden. If you don't do this, you might find that you're keeping your hand in there for two minutes until it hardens, and then you take it out and a wave maker just blasts it over. So just turn off your return pumps and your wave makers until the glue and epoxy have a chance to harden. Then go ahead and turn your lights down. A lot of corals need to be acclimated over a few weeks to high light conditions, so just turning them down is gonna help them recover and acclimate to your new tank. Prepare your coral locations, even if you don't know exactly where they are, sometimes taking a small bristle brush and just gently brushing off areas of your aquascape. For example, if there's a spot on the aquascape lower down that you wanna put your coral, but there's a lot of sand on there or a lot of algae, you're just not gonna have luck attaching it there. So get out a soft bristle brush and just wipe down the areas that you're gonna place your coral, that way they'll hold in place faster. Then you're gonna trim or remove your frag plugs if necessary. I personally hate the look of frag plugs in my tank. Sometimes you can't avoid it because it's encrusting type coral, but then you don't have to worry because over time it will completely cover that. But if possible, remove the corals from the frag plugs or at least take out some bone cutters and trim off as much as possible. Then you're gonna try your hand at being a landscape architect. Before you glue anything into place, take all the corals you're gonna put on your scape and move them around to different locations. Obviously being careful not to tip them over or, or injuring them in any way. But if you can find areas where you can place them, then you can step back and take a peek at your tank, see what colors clash, see what things don't clash, see if the flow is right, all those things. Put them where you want them, take a step back, make any changes that are necessary, and then you'll know exactly where you want those corals. First up is attaching soft corals there are a few different ways to do this. If your soft coral is already on a piece of rubble rock, you have a couple options here. One, you can use epoxy or super glue and glue and epoxy that piece of rubble rock to the aquascape. This works really well, especially if the rubble rock is a similar color to the aquascape. You could also take that piece of rubble rock if it's large enough and bury it in the sand bed then it will look like your soft coral is just kind of sprouting out from the sand bed. But if a piece of rubble rock is too small, you may need to glue it to a larger piece of rock and then bury that into the sand bed just so it doesn't fall over. And lastly, you can use the rubber band method. Just take some sort of surgical scissors or that razor blade, cut off the soft coral at its base, and then gently use rubber bands to attach it to the part of the aquascape you want. You have to make sure that the rubber bands are hard enough that it stays put, but not too hard, or it will just pull through the tissue over the course of a couple days, splitting the coral in two. One last option for soft corals is if the base is just the right size, you can often put it into some sort of large crevice, and that might be secure enough, but only use that method if putting it into that crevice will truly hold it in place. Moving on to stony corals, again, there are various ways, but probably the most common way is using superglue. For stony corals that have a large stony base, think euphelia, I always remove them from their frag plug. Then, if I can, I will just put a generous amount of superglue all the way around the base, and sometimes I will take one of these and put a generous amount of superglue down on the aquascape itself. The thing about super glue is it's not necessarily the most sticky substance underwater, but once it dries, it creates a structure around the stony coral and around the aquascape itself. So you want to use a lot. After I apply all the super glue, I usually give it a spritz or two with the accelerant, and then I quickly put it underwater and I hold it in place until it hardens. I recommend using gloves here, and people have commented before, Matthew, you're using gloves, the gloves are filling with water, what's the point? Well, the point is not to stick your fingers together. I have stuck my fingers together doing this, and it's, it's super embarrassing, and it takes a long time to get them unstuck. 
There are other stony corals, for example, acanth, that can do really well just sitting on the sand bed. So if that's the case, just place them on the sand bed. Just make sure there aren't any other things like sand sifting gobies or sand sifting starfish that might knock it over or that might just constantly douse it with sand. If for whatever reason, super glue just isn't holding well enough, then you can break out the epoxy. And epoxy is fantastic. It's safe underwater and it will harden relatively quickly. This will help create a lot more structure around both the coral and the aquascape to hopefully hold it in place. But combining epoxy and super glue together might even work better. And last up, we have encrusting type corals. These are corals that have generally already encrusted onto a frag disc or a frag plug. What I like to do is take my bone cutters and trim around and remove as much of the frag disc or frag plug as possible. That way I just don't have to stare at it for a long time. But these are just like stony corals, super easy to attach. Just use a generous amount of super glue on the bottom. If you want, you can take one of these metal BRS super glues, put it underwater, apply a generous amount of super glue to the aquascape, put it down and hold it in place. If you want to speed up the process, use a little bit of accelerant. You probably will only need to hold it in place for 10 to 15 seconds. If you're not using accelerant and you're just using the extra thick super glue, then you might have to hold it in place for one to two minutes. Now I get that was super basic and it probably didn't answer every single one of your questions, but hopefully that gives you enough to go on. If you want a lot more information, check out this video here. Way more detail and specific examples of how to put corals into your display tank. The corals are installed. We've given them a day to open up. We come back in the morning, they look fantastic. Maybe we want to feed them for the first time. Well, that is, of course, our final episode in the Ultimate Beginner Guide to Saltwater Aquariums and Reef Tanks. You can check it out right here. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.